The Nintendo 64 is a console which tends to divide most gamers. Launching back in 1996 as the gaming industry's bread and butter while switching from sprites to polygons, the console represents the first time Nintendo really dropped the ball. Tired of the platform holder's licensing terms, many developers jumped ship to Sony's PlayStation, attracted by fairer deals and cheaper disc-based games. In the meantime, Nintendo doubled down on the esoteric piece of hardware with confusing bright coloured controllers that were arguably a little out of step with game gaming's ageing audience. On the other hand, for many gamers, the Nintendo 64 invokes some of the very warmest and strongest game memories. It was while banishing the colours the console's even three pronged controller that many of us take our first steps into the three dimensional gaming world. From the money mushroom king of the Hyrule to the unrivalled excitement of four player split screen on Mario Kart and Goldeneye, it holds a special place in many of our hearts. Over this short series of videos, we were looking at 50 of the best games ever released for the Nintendo 64 based on user ratings. Today, we will look at the next 10 best games ranked from number 20 to 11. Number 20, Mystical Ninja Starring Giamo, user score 8.32 out of 10. A real gem in the console's catalogue, Mi Mystical Ninja Starring Giamo makes you pine for the days when Konami still made video games. A surreal Japanese platforming adventure that combines a cast of colourful characters with oddball and enjoying humour, it's a minor classic that's still worth playing today. Number 19, WWF No Mercy, user score 8.34 out of 10. Much like every sport in video game form, the history of wrestling games is littered with plenty of lows, middling efforts and a handful of highs. WWF No Mercy is very much in the latter. If, in fact, with depth that's often missing from wrestling games two decades on, it's a legitimate contender for the greatest wrestling game ever made. For a system with a scarcity of one-on-one -on -one combat titles, AKI's game is an extravagantly large feather in the console's cap. Number 18, Mario Kart 64, user score 8.35 out of 10. While the races themselves might not have been truly 3D, Mario Kart 64's huge superb circuit still showed off the benefits of the 64-bit hardware. It added inclines, items, obstacles and 4-player multiplayer mode to the winning formula Nintendo cooked up on the Super Nintendo. This is the game which gives us Toad's turn back, of course. Each iteration of the Mario Kart series has a little something new, but following on from the flat circuits of Super Mario Kart, there's arguably nothing quite like the first jump to 3D. Number 17, Mario Party 3, user score 8.43 out of 10. The third and final Fiesta frame by Mario in the 1064, the game's formula had been well established by this point. Unchanged from its previous entry, Mario Party 3 kicks it up a gear beyond a new influx of minigames. But that doesn't stop Mario Party 3 from being a quintessential entry in the series. A riot with multiplayer friends and a soul crushing grind for the lonely single player when the game introduced story mode to the series. We all know the real reason this place is as high as it does on this list. This is due to Daisy and Wah Luigi making their polished party debut, of course. As the final Mario Party to release on 64, it's darn good send off. Number 16 Resident Evil 2, user score 8.46 out of 10. Resident Evil 2 is where the modern series as we know it began. The first game was terrifying, but the production values of the original version put it in the realm of the straight-to-video home horror genre. They would get reconnected with the remake, but the Resident Evil 2 upped the ante considerably in every way and established a look and feel that the series embraced from then on. And it's in the 64 version of the PlayStation Classic in a technically incredible port in its own right, with the Nintendo GameCube version being sharper, but arguably less interesting. Number 15, Star Wars Rogue Squadron, user score 8.52 out of 10. Rogue Squadron gave Nintendo 64 owners some real fodder to use in playground arguments about which console had the best games. With the expansion pack plugin and the console's spindly analog sticks suited its arcadey flight mechanics perfectly. With plenty of audio dialogue and all the customary Star Wars sound effects, this was a cracking game. Its GameCube sequel uh, prettified the visuals, but the base mechanics in the Nintendo 64 original still feel fantastic. So if you're looking for a galactic dose of quality flyboy action, Road Squadron is the one for you. Number 14, Mario Party 2, user score 8.53 out of 10. Of the three mini-game bonanzas that came out for Nintendo 64, Mario Party 2 is arguably the fan favourite. This is where battle, item and dual minigames got their start and you can spend all the time in the world practicing the minigames before you start, so you can ensure you're perfect for the party play. 
Obviously you'll need three friends to get the most out of this, but the first three could build on the foundation of the original and steered the series on a steady course which now extends well into double figures. Even two decades later, it stands as one of the best party games ever. Number 13, Conker's Bad Fur Day, user score 8.56 out of 10. Another iconic entry in the Nintendo 64 catalogue from Rare, Conker's Bad Fur Day stood out proudly from the pack of its cutesy platformers as a far mouth blood-filled comedy. I'm so surprised a game like of this nature was ever released on a Nintendo console. Conker was a technological triumph for the aging 64-bit system when it launched in 2001, while the movie parodies are very much of their time and the humour won't hit the spot for everyone, the drunken squirrel still knows how to have a good time. Number 12, Diddy Kong Racing, user score 8.57 out of 10. Diddy Kong Racing did for Mario Kart 64 pretty much what Banjo and Kazooie would soon do for the Super Mario 64. Namely, take the template put down by Nintendo and expand on it with colour and creativity to produce far more than a mere homage. Donkey Kong Racing, expanded the single player into an adventure and the addition of planes and hovercraft required much larger, more complex circuits to race around. The game also provided the console debuts of Banjo and Conker. Number 11, Banjo Tooie, user score 8.59 out of 10. Following the James Cameron score of thoughts for sequels, Banjo Tooie takes a more is more approach with larger worlds, a host of minigames, an expanded moveset, Mumbo Jumbo as a playable character, Bosses and multiplayer mode plus the ability to separate a dynamic duo at certain times. Although ugly first with the feeling grindy at times, it's a bit big chewy sequel and one that holds up very well all these years later. Manju Tourist filled to the boom with the series trademark brand of cheeky fairy tale, Wonder, and fans will find a lot of love here. So that's it, so I hope you enjoyed. If you guys punch the like button, leave a comment down below, cross subscribe to this channel for my Twitter and Instagram links down below as always. And of course, we are partnered with TubeBuddy. First thing in the description for YouTube, Nick, tag that's one of those other good stuff. So that's something that you are interested in uh, and will find helpful like I did. Uh, first thing in the description, trust me, I wonder how you get on right. And of course, we are partnered on the channel, so when you head down below, hit the join button, support myself and the channel, we greatly appreciate for who and your benefits. But of course, you never have to, but if you don't, you have to subscribe to my next video. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I'll be next talk I'll see you all again very soon.